Hi guys, this is the ex Ebony Goddess, and um, on my intro, you saw pictures of me with Mel Band T-shirts that I have owned throughout the years. I lost my arch enemy, I lost my soul work, and my cannibal corpse, and my Kudo or Fifth shirt is somewhere in the house. It's either somewhere or it's. I lost it and hopefully I'll be able to find them because I missed them a lot okay so this video is going to be based on what I tell my experience of being an african-american goth or a melahead because they both pretty much go together because that's pretty much who I am and I would give my experience on you know the fact that I was in high school middle school and family and friends my experience and all this other stuff okay so i started listening to rock music um rock and metal when i was about in the fifth grade that's when i started um um when mtv used to show more music videos um i would always watch hamburgers balls and i would always watch the rock station countdown on mtv2 like mtv2 used to be based on music you know of all kinds so um like i said before i've always been a fan um, I mean, I, I have always. Been. That's why I, I started listening to more rock music and more metal music and everything. So um, after that, um, after you know, MTV. Uh, I mean, after discovering so many bands on Headbangers Balls and also the Rock Station Countdown, I discovered you know, Avenged Sevenfold. I discovered Slipknot. I consider, I consider, I um. I discovered La Conda Coral, I discovered Cannibal Corpse. So, um, it was very, very interesting. So, um, it, it was wonderful. I, I, I fell in love with it. It was amazing. So, after... Hold on, sorry. There we go. I had to... Uh... Okay, there we go. It's charging. <laughs> okay. So, um... You know, after discovering those bands, uh, I would go on the internet and discover them, listen to more of, the mu more of their albums instead of the singles that I would like just hear from, you know, MTV2 on Headmaker's Bombs or The Rock Station Countdown, The Rock Countdown, or on Fuse TV. And I also got into it by watching, you know, Metal Aside, uh, Julia, who was the metal VJ on Fuse. Uh, listen to Metal Side, you know, Slate to the Metal. Um, I actually listened to King when I was younger. Um, I remember liking their song Brackish and Charlotte. But, and I also remember Mudvayne, uh, some of Monday's, Mudvayne's music. And also, I also remember being younger, seeing a couple of Slipknot's, um, music videos. Um, I remember seeing Wait and Bleed in my, uh, grandparents' house. I was sitting there and we were on... MTV or it was MTV or MTV2, one of those, and um, they would show all types of music. They would show rap, R&B, all types. So I always, I remember, you know, seeing their videos when I was younger. So, you know, after, since I, um, I'm sorry, I'm all over the place. Okay, so, um, I went to an all-black school. Something just a plane just passed by. So I pretty much went to an all black school. Um, not really an all black school, but majority of African Americans went there. And um, sorry, uh, uh, it was a majority. It was in an urban uh, area where it was pretty much the hood, where people were fighting, people were shooting each other, killing each other, people were stealing. It was horrible. So, I couldn't find anyone who would like to me. I actually did find a really good friend. Actually, I did find one person. Her name was Brittany Pittman. She was completely amazing, and, and I was able to relate to her a lot. But, uh, anyway, um, going to that school, I was not able. I didn't have a lot of friends. I had one friend, but I didn't have, like, a lot of friends. So, I was forced to go on the internet, go on mail chats, 
and stuff like that to, you know, discover people. And I actually discovered someone that I still talk to to this day. But um, I went on metal chats and stuff, and I was able to talk to people who um, like the same things that I like. And um, I discovered other bands. I discovered more heavier stuff. I discovered, like, doom metal uh Death metal besides chemical Corpse, I discovered power metal. I discovered opera metal. I discovered bands like Nightwish. I discovered the kind of coral. Well, I, well, actually, I, I realized the kind of coral was the band name. I thought it was the female that was singing. I thought Chris, Christina describing her name was the kind of coral. Um, blonde moment. Um, I discovered my dying bride. I discovered a paradise lost. Um. I discovered Stomping Young Lead. I discovered Arch Enemy. I discovered oh, I discovered so many bands for so many different genres, and I, I fell in love with it. It was amazing. So um, that's how I fell in love with metal, and that's how I became who I am today. Um, so like I said before, I went to an all-black school where there was majority of black people there. There was a couple of Mexicans and a couple of whites, but it was majority of black people. Um, and that was a very hard time for me. I did not like that fucking school. If I didn't have metal music and I did not have wrestling in my life at that time to um, help me be away from reality, I pretty much doubt that I would have survived because that was the most shittiest school ever that I went to. Um, because it was just horrible. People were fighting, just doing like real stupid shit. People, like, if you look at someone the wrong way, you know. They want to fight. If you bump into them, you want to fight. People were spreading like fucking rumors, just starting shit. It was just horrible. So my experience being a metalhead slash goth. Um, yes, I, I also became a goth because the, the goth subculture is just so amazing. I love it. Um, um, wasn't a good experience because the fact that this is an urban um, area and. Sadly, in a way, the black community is very close-minded. That's just how it is. Um, people didn't really understand me. They were pretty much very ignorant. They just assumed that just because I came to school wearing eyeliner, I, I worship Satan, which is funny. Um, one day, I came to school wearing wrist arm warmers. I worship Satan. Um, I came to school wearing black lipstick. I worship Satan. And then they thought that I was trying to be someone I'm not. They thought that I was trying to be white. They thought that I was ashamed of my culture, which I'm very proud of. Because, I mean, I wouldn't be here. And, um... You know, people were spreading rumors that I sacrificed chicken. And and, and and this is just me wearing eyeliner. We had, like, a fucking dress code where you had to wear white collar shirts and jeans. Okay? And people were just spreading. Um, it didn't, also didn't help the fact that I had an older sister who went to school with me who can relate to those people um, who were into the, the whole, like, urban fashion, BET, the whole bullshit. And people kept comparing me to her, asking me why I don't dress like her and why I don't act like her. It was just pretty much horrible. So, I was like that f since, um, uh, for the, the, the two years and a half that I, uh, went to that school. That school was horrible. I couldn't find anyone. I only had, like, one friend. And it was just, I didn't really like it. So, around the beginning of my eighth grade year, my mom announced that we were going to move. And we were going to move to a suburb. And I was kind of excited. A suburb when there was just majority of white people, white people who go to a school. It, it was just, it, it was just majority of white people that, that was there. And I was excited because, not because there was just white people there. I knew that I would eventually, um, I would eventually uh, find people who like the same thing as I do. You know, I was going to be so excited that I would eventually find someone who liked the stuff that I love. So, sadly, that didn't go too well because I came dressing as I wanted to dress. Uh, if you look at me, I was very alternative or whatever. And um, I noticed that they did have, like, a golf group with golf, punk rockers or whatever. And this was my eighth grade year that I moved into White Summit, which is called White Summit. 
And I know the Sagat group, and I, you know, try to hang out with them. I try to get to know the people, the uh, the alternative group. But for some reason, they didn't accept me in. Um, again, I I also found out that me being there, they were also close my about black people because they just assumed that you know I didn't have both my parents. I was ghetto or whatever, and they just really, 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 really didn't accept me at all, which I admit, I'm kind of happy they didn't because these were some shadow ass golfs, I'm just serious, or shadow ass rocker people, I'm happy that I didn't, um, I didn't, um, become friends with them because they were pretty much the opposite, you know, I am a metalhead, I am a golf, but it's, I'm a happy person, I have my days, um, I live like to the fullest, I just don't dislike someone just to dislike them. These were people who had preps, these are people who had certain things but didn't have a really good reason, like, I hate preppy people because they act so girly and they go shopping and I'm like, what the fuck does that matter, you know? They were just very, very shallow and I'm kind of happy that I didn't hang out with that kind of crowd because that's not who I am. Um... That I, I can't hang with judgmental people, and they were just they were just too, they were like a stereotypical golf, which, um, where you know I'm depressed and I hate everybody. You know, it was just too much. So I they didn't um, they didn't accept me, and I kind of happy I didn't because I didn't have any drama. Uh, so from that I went to school from eighth grade to the day I graduated. And I was able to find people who love the music that I love. And they were just as cool, just as different, just as amazing. It was just so amazing that I found friends. And not all my friends were golf. Not all my friends were metalhead. Some of them were anime. Some of them were preppy. Some of them were crazy as hell. Some of them were perverted. Um, I'm kind of happy that I, I found my friends. And I found friends. And... and and I became friends with them because they were cool, not because they liked the same things that I do. Um, we had things in common, but it's not just the male music. We probably didn't have male music in common, but we love, like, Family Guy or something. So experience from that, I was happy. Now, the experience from the black people, the, the small amount of black people that actually went to that school when I was there, they felt like I was trying to be white and I was ashamed about my culture, just as the same as the people from the middle school that I first went to. Um, the people outside who wasn't really golf or whatever with the preppy and, and the jocks, um, I didn't really have an issue from them. They didn't really seem to give a damn. But, um, you yeah, know, that's my experience, you know. In middle school and high school, and both being, and comparing it to when I went, went was in an urban area, to a suburbs. So my experience of being a metalhead golf who happens to be chocolate uh, with family, uh, no one understands me in my house. No one. My parents don't understand me. My sisters don't understand me. I have a dad and a sister who's over-religious who continues to think that I'm trying to get into the dark side or some other bullshit. My mom, she doesn't understand me. I, I mean, this is my experience. You know, people are just a bunch of douchebags and I don't really care anymore. I don't really care for anybody's approval. This is who I am. Um, yes, my music, the music I listen to, the way I dress. Actually, I can't even dress the way I want because my dad has, like, a huge fucking issue with it or whatever. You know, like, he makes a big deal if I have eyeliner on. Um, but anyway, um, my music doesn't define who I... My, my interests do define my personality, and in some ways, it defines me completely. In some ways, it defines me in a way, but, you know, it's just... You know, stereotypes are stupid, you know? Stereotypes are dumb. They should be banned and whoever created them should, like, die like a slow, painful death. Well, not die, but should be, you know, you know, I don't know, but stereotypes are not cool. But, um, yeah, that's my experience of being a black metalhead goth. Um, you know, I enjoy the music that I love and, um, 
you know, now that I'm turning 21, I just don't care. This is who I am. This is who I am, and, and if no one doesn't like it, that's that's their problem. And I don't need my parents' approval. I don't need people's approval. I just really don't care. So, yeah, that's my experience of being a black golf um, in school, family, and with my friends. My friends are amazing people. I am so happy that I got a chance to meet them. And we were able to become friends besides a difference. So, yeah, that's my experience. And this is probably not a good video because I was blabbling the whole time. But, yeah, I am a metalhead. I am a goth. And I am chocolate, okay? And this is who I am. So if you don't like it and you have a huge issue, oh well. So that is it. Uh, once again, this is the ex Ebony Goddess. Uh, peace, love, and rock on.